Overview of the quantification process. In the previous modules, we focused on planning a GHG inventory. The remaining modules will focus on the process of actually developing the inventory. Some key concepts we will cover include selecting a calculation approach and quantifying emissions, collecting data and applying emission factors, creating a GHG inventory report, and third-party inventory verification. In this module, we will introduce the fundamental elements of calculating greenhouse gas emissions. Once the inventory boundary has been established, calculating emissions is a straightforward four-step process. The first step is selecting a calculation approach. The second step is collecting activity data and emission factors. The third step is applying calculation methods and tools. And the final step is rolling up the emissions data to the corporate, institutional, or entity level. We already talked about identifying and categorizing emissions in a previous module, but here is a brief recap. Greenhouse gas emissions typically come from one of the following four source categories. Stationary combustion, mobile combustion, process emissions, and fugitive emissions. Once emissions have been identified, they can be further sorted into one of three groups. Direct emissions, energy indirect emissions, and other indirect emissions. These groups are also known as scopes 1, 2, and 3. Once all emission sources have been identified and categorized, a calculation method should be selected in order to quantify the actual emissions into the atmosphere. There are two primary methods for ass assessing greenhouse gas emissions, direct measurement and the use of calculations. Direct measurement of greenhouse gas emissions by monitoring concentration and flow rates has traditionally been limited to stationary combustion applications such as boilers, furnaces, and kilns. However, under the EPA's mandatory reporting rule, many types of facilities are now being required to use direct monitoring equipment to measure emissions. However, as stationary combustion is only one part of many emission sources, most companies use calculation techniques to quantify their greenhouse gas emissions. Calculation techniques may still involve the use of scientific measurements but not necessarily direct measurements of greenhouse gas emission rates. For example, in an earlier module we used the carbon content of gasoline to calculate the greenhouse gas emissions from its combustion. We know gasoline is 85.5% carbon, or about, and combustion leads to 19.37 pounds of CO2 per gallon, sort of the equivalent of 2.3 kilograms of CO2 per liter. The emission factor is known, no need for direct measurements. This approach, often referred to as the mass balance approach, is used by many facilities under national and international reporting programs, both voluntary and mandatory. The only variance is that in some cases, mandatory programs such as the EPA's mandatory greenhouse gas reporting rule require facilities to sample their fossil fuels periodically in order to capture any variation in the fuel's carbon content over time. When it comes to calculating greenhouse gas emissions, the most common approach is the use of documented emission factors. An emission factor is defined as the average emissions rate of a greenhouse gas from a particular source or activity. Emission factors are calculated ratios that relate greenhouse gas emissions to a determined amount of activity at an emissions source. For example, Gainesville Regional Utilities, a municipal power provider located in Gainesville, Florida, has an emissions factor of 1968 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour. This means that for each megawatt hour of electricity generated, 
1,968 pounds of carbon dioxide are emitted into the atmosphere. The emission factor here is a result of the various generators supplying electricity to the utility's grid, which could be a combination of coal, natural gas, biomass, and other sources. Electric emission factors can change over time and vary per geographic location, so make sure you match up the correct utility and its most recently published emission factors for greenhouse gas inventory purposes. Now, let's look at some of the other examples of emission factors, which don't change over time and can typically be applied worldwide. The emission factor for natural gas is 0.12 pounds of CO2 per cubic foot or 2.02 kilograms CO2 per cubic meter. The emission factor for jet fuel is 21.09 pounds of CO2 per gallon, the equivalent of 2.52 kilogram of CO2 per liter, and the emission factor for gasoline is 19.37 pounds of CO2 per gallon, or 2.3 kilogram CO2 per liter. It is important to note that emission factors are often expressed in metric units or in terms of their energy content as opposed to their volume. For instance, the emission factor of gasoline can also be expressed as 2.3 kg per liter and 70.88 kg of CO2 per million BTUs. To further complicate things, Emission factors are sometimes expressed in terms of carbon rather than carbon dioxide. When this is the case, simply multiply the emission factor by 44 over 12 to convert from carbon to carbon dioxide. We will talk more about emission factors when we get into the collecting data module. For now, it suffices to say that emission factors are well documented, backed by science, widely used in the industry, and are expressed in various formats. Emission factors are used to estimate greenhouse gas emissions based on activity data. Activity data is defined as data on the magnitude of an activity that results in greenhouse gas emissions or removals over a period of time. Basically, activity data is used to quantify an activity, such as energy use, or employees' business trips, for example. Activity data can be expressed in many different units and are found in both metric and English. For example, cubic feet of natural gas consumed, kilowatt hour of electricity consumed, miles traveled in a train, plane, or car, the conversion of limestone into cement. Once the activity data and emission factors have been assembled, greenhouse gas emissions can be calculated. For example, Let's assume that a company consumed 100 gallons of gasoline last year. Now, we know that the emission factor for gasoline is 19.37 pounds of CO2 per gallon. In this case, the activity data is the number of gallons consumed and the emission rate of 19.37 pounds of carbon dioxide per gallon is the emission factor. So, 100 gallons of gasoline times 19.37 pounds per gallon would result in 1,937 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. Next, to convert to metric ton, simply divide by 2,204.6 to arrive at 0.87 tons of CO2. We have now reviewed the first step to quantifying greenhouse gas emissions selecting a calculation approach. In the next section of this module, we will discuss step number two, collecting data.